Hi, I'm Matt from All About Drink. And I'm Tom from All About Drink. And today we're going to review this whiskey, the Green Spot Shadow Montalena Cask. Okay, what's so special about this, Matt? Well, this is a, a take on a previous whiskey that has been made before, the Green Spot, uh, made by Michelin Sons, or I suppose more so owned by Michelin Sons, and made by Middleton in County Cork. Um, they've been producing this whiskey since about the 1850s, uh, the original. Um, but now they have uh, gone ahead and aged it in a cask from one of the wine suppliers that they actually import from. So I suppose we need to give a bit of background to, uh, to this whiskey. Mitchell and Sons, um, they first set up in 1805 in Dublin. They, uh, a gentleman by, uh, called Mr. Mitchell came over from uh, the UK and managed to find a really nice property in Dublin. So he set up shop and he originally started baking cakes, um, importing port and selling it by the bottle and buying in tea and selling it uh, to the gentry of Dublin. So the Michelin Sons Vintners, they started producing this whiskey, and it was a big success. And it's a, a pure pot still, or a, a single pot still whiskey in style, which is similar to, say, a single malt, but for the fact that they use malted barley and unmalted barley. And the reason that this actual whiskey came to be was because when the English were actually occupying Ireland, they put an exorbitant uh, tax on malted barley, which made it... Um, so uh, almost impossible to actually make money from whiskey production that hundreds of distilleries closed around Ireland. Including this one in Dublin, yeah? Including this. They actually went out of production in, say, the 1960s, 1970s, okay. when we, the Irish whiskey industry almost went defunct. Okay. Um, and that's when all of the, the last few distilleries, Jameson and Bow Street, Powers and John's Lane, um, Middleton and Cork, they all accumulated to become the uh, Irish distillers. Okay, which um, is more or less based in Cork. Yes, oh. absolutely. Bushmills were involved, but they thought just because of the geographical gap between them right. that it wasn't feasible to move all of their production down to Middleton. Okay. So they gave their support, but um, still stayed uh, separate to that actual company. Um, then, with the revival of Irish whiskey recently, um, there was a real call for pots of whiskies again to combat the, the single malt uh, scotches that were being produced and were absolutely dominating the industry. Um, once upon a time, Irish whiskey would have accounted for anything up to 70% of whiskey consumed globally. But isn't it, the, there's a hard, there was initially a harsher taste of pot still whiskey and the Americans didn't like it during Prohibition. Wasn't that part of the decline? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the fact that we had fairly primitive uh, distilling equipment at that time uh, would have absolutely made quite a, a harsh whiskey. But um, I suppose the pure pot still it actually started taking over as an after-dinner tipple. Um, even in the UK, uh, pot still whiskies were favoured and Irish pot still whiskies were, were favoured for an after-dinner drink. It was actually almost replacing brandy. Okay, so um, there's a bit of a reinvention of the pot still whiskey or revitalisation of yeah, it or absolutely. demand for pot still rather absolutely. than side-by-side side still. Is that the alternative? Yes, the, col- uh, the column stills, which they're massive, tall, cylindrical, um, stills literally continuous uh, it would be grain so corn and maize that would go into the production okay. makes a much lighter style whiskey and it's predominantly used for blending okay. whereas there is absolutely no corn or grain in this okay so yeah we're going to taste it now um, just to give you a couple of characteristics of um, pots of whiskies and how they taste this is triple distilled so three stills side by side the more you distill a spirit the softer it gets which uh, Irish whiskey is quite well known for However, this actual style of whiskey, Pure Pot Still, is very, very punchy. This whiskey is traditionally aged in bourbon barrels and Oloroso sherry, which gives you a real spicy character, especially coming from the pot still. You get a lovely amount of spices coming through it, and classically red apples and ripe pear. Um, but with the addition of the aging in Shadow Montalena, Zinfandel casks, you get some lovely berry qualities coming through, even bits of marshmallow and cranberry which is purely down to the, the finishing for, say, the final year in the Shadow Montalena barrel. So you're looking at about an age between 8 and 11 years. So this is one of the most hugely influenced whiskies by the American style, or not style, but because it's originally in um, American bourbon barrels, and then it's in the Chateau Montalena. Is that the correct way to pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chateau, or it's originally, and then it's in the Chateau Montalena barrels. So yeah. it's, this is a big American-Irish cousin. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, uh, I suppose the States would have been unheard of up until about 1976 when uh, Shadow Montalena, 
actually entered the Juge de Paris, which is like the Olympics for wine, essentially. It's a, it's a massive blind tasting where right. Chateau Montalena entered their 1973 vintage of Chardonnay into the 1976 Juge de Paris and absolutely wiped all the Burgundian producers of Chardonnay in a blind tasting. Okay. And it really put the states on the map with regards to, I suppose, international and global recognition of their actual skills. Um, so it's great to see the Irish and American connection. Okay. Mm. Well, there's, this will be aged probably for maybe three or four years in ex bourbon barrels first. Yeah. And then the Oloroso sherry barrels and then... Shadow Montalena yeah, to, yeah. to finish okay. off. Yeah, yeah, to really so, round it out. Okay, so it's gone from America to Portugal to America. Essentially, yes. And, and Irish at and the end of the day. And off in Ireland, yeah, just to finish Ireland. it off. Okay, so we're going to taste this? Or yeah, we gonna absolutely. <laughs> okay. Right. Now... So, so let's get into tasting it. The fun bit. Like the smell. Exactly. <laughs> to right. Mm. So what are we looking for here? What are the characteristics of the well, nose? Pots of the whiskies always give a really high viscosity in the whiskey, mm-hmm. and you can see that it's almost syrupy. Mm-hmm. On the nose, straight away, loads of spice. Mm-hmm. A real gingery aspect, which you're you're always going to get in pots of the whiskies. But because this whiskey is actually non-chill filtered as well, it's 46%. Right. Right. So it's going to be a bit more powerful, a bit more punchy. And right. the alcohol molecules are going to be really dense. So we're going to have a smell, have a taste, and then we're going to add some water. Okay. And we'll, we'll just cut that alcohol layer. Okay. I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely wow. heat. Yeah. Tons of spice. Mm. You can definitely see the, the Zinfandel cast. There's a real mm-hmm. blackberry kind of taste off it. Real berry taste. It's quite unusual. It's quite dry too. Yeah. Which you rarely see actually in a whiskey. And that could actually be the tannin from, from the wine having an impact on the actual right. whiskey itself. Right. Cool, so we'll try it with a bit of water. As I said, literally not even 10 drops. We're okay. going to have a little... Uh, that was a lemon, Matt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was never <laughs> good at counting. Lemon. Definitely better at drinking. So the addition of water, it opens up the oils in the whiskey? Is yeah, that what? yeah, absolutely. So it, it, Need so to give it a really good swirl. Right, so somebody told me one time that you should always add at least a teaspoon of water to whiskey to open it up. But, I mean, is that rule of thumb or is it just somebody else's preference? Totally down to preference as well. Like some people add an ice cube in. But then again, if you add an ice cube... You can't really control the level of, of uh, distillation, or sorry, of dilution. Even right. um, I would even use a pipette okay. if you want to be really, really anal about it. I suppose <laughs> <laughs> just to, just right. so you don't. If you water right. it down too much, you're just gonna you're gonna waste it, and okay. it's just gonna be too diluted. Right. So, so we're looking for a different flavor, not a different flavor, but more. It's open. It should open yeah, up more. Absolutely. You're gonna get more tertiary and secondary okay. uh, flavor profiles that are hidden because there's a chemical reaction between the water and the lipids or the fats in the whiskey. Okay. And okay. even when you poured the water in, you can see almost like legs yeah. on the side of a glass. Right. Um, actually, inside the whiskey, you're dropping, say, water into olive oil. Right. And it just it, it pushes out all okay. that alcohol vapor and okay. just reveals a, a totally different well, let's, let's see what flavor. it's revealed. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a lot softer. Yeah, absolutely. A lot easier to, to pick out the flavors. 100%. I mean, I, I suppose we've cut the alcohol a little bit on it mm. by diluting it, so it's not as there's as strong a burn. Absolutely. I'm actually starting to get that kind of marshmallow flavour. Mm. It's very creamy as well, very mouth coating. Because they actually say that 35% alcohol is the optimum ABV right. to get to that your tongue can actually taste the mm. most mm. most amount of flavours from. That's really nice. Mm, absolutely. Really nice. Uh, today we're going to be tasting our second pot still whiskey okay. um, in the range. So this is the Powers Johns Lane, being produced by Middleton County Cork. Okay. So what's so unique about Powers Johns Lane? Well, Powers Johns Lane is a bit of a hat tip to the original distillery that was uh, located in Johns Lane in Dublin. Um, Traditionally, in the last, say, 50 years, Powers has been predominantly a blend, uh, which we all know and love, which goes into Irish coffees and thimbles in our 
granny's houses and whatnot. Okay. Um, but this is a real, as I said, a hat nod to how they would have originally uh, been distilling this. Um, so it is a pure pot still. So it's made with malted barley and unmalted barley. The green barley, which is a lot tougher to use, but gives us such a distinct flavour profile, which okay. is so typically Irish these days. Um, so it is aged for 12 years. It's on the front, it says a 12-year-old. Okay. And by Irish law, whatever age statement is on the front of the bottle means that the youngest whiskey in the bottle goes on the front. Oh, okay, so there could be some 16-year-old or 18-year-old whiskey, but yeah, absolutely. the minimum... On the label is the minimum age, so there's nothing under 12 in this bottle, but there could be... Not a drop. Okay, correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, this is aged in your standard bourbon barrels for the majority of its life. Which this is. Yeah, exactly, standard which bourbon it's actually barrel. sitting on, sitting yeah, on okay. top of. And then it goes into Oloroso Sherry and Iberian Oak, so essentially port pipes, port barrels. Okay, mm. so... Sh- there's a slight port influence on this from the port barrels. Absolutely. Quite a substantial okay. one, I would say, even in this. It's okay. it's very weighty. It's almost not even liquid-like. It's almost like it's starting to congeal. Yeah, it's pretty dark in colour, too. Yeah, absolutely. It's really taken on the colour of the of the port. Okay. Gives it a lovely ruby, rich colour to it. Okay. And this particular whiskey is also non-chill filters. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, so um, chill filtration quite simply is a process in whiskey where you chill it as it's being filtered okay. um, why they do it it's just I suppose for I suppose for continuity um, uh, if you don't chill filter it like this whiskey hasn't been there's a chance that it could flock or go hazy so flocking is uh, if it isn't chill filtered it, if you see um, a dramatic drop in temperature mm-hmm. that the whiskey would almost go cloudy or, or hazy I suppose okay. um, it's purely aesthetic but the reason that they do it is just literally so you have a streamlined whiskey. Uh, so if you were bringing this back in an airplane and it was down in the cargo hold, it, it could turn cloudy, yeah. temperature drop by the yeah. time you get home. Absolutely. Okay. But I've but it's nothing. It's obviously it's it, it's just a visual thing. It doesn't yeah. really affect the. Yeah, it's not it's taste. not detriment, uh, detrimental okay. to the to the liquid well, inside. This one looks pretty clear. So yeah, will Happy we try days. it? Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna get the classic spice ball or ball of spice I should say uh, that we get with all pot still whiskies there's a real I suppose this whiskey actually smells like how marzipan tastes okay. uh, real kind of almondy quality there um, yeah. tons of fruit too so we'll have a sniff we'll have a taste and then we'll add some water just to cut that alcohol there yeah I get that kind of sweet marzipan yeah yeah it's like really soft Christmassy Christmas cake marzipan 100% Okay. Almost like a treacle toffee smell in there too. Mmm. Tons, tons of oil here. You can really taste the oiliness mm. of the whiskey. Mm. Yeah. Super mouth coating. Even a bit of cinnamon, nutmeg, like you were saying, Christmas cake kind of flavours. Maraschino cherries. Yeah, sweet. Pretty sweet flavour. Mm. For a non-chill filter whiskey at 46%, that's scarily easy to drink. Yeah. Even without the water. But sure, look, for continuity, you're good to go. <laughs> Let's throw a bit of water. Ooh. 11 or 10? <laughs> 10. Drops of water. 10. The, one, the other one is rolling <laughs> okay. down the side of your glass. Okay. So give it a go at where I'll expel all that whiskey vapor. Have a sniff of it too. Because yeah. it is just going to be a strong blast of whiskey of uh, alcohol. Mm. I will go back to it. The yeah. alcohol is still there, pretty strong though. Absolutely, it's lifted a small bit, and you can start mm. to get a lot more of the fruitier aspects of this whiskey. Mm. Definitely some dried fruits in there, a bit more tropical even. And a really long finish, the flavour just goes on and on. Yeah, I like it. No wonder it's so popular. Yeah. So, these are two pot still whiskies from the same distillery, but they're very different. And what are the kind of influencing factors that make, you know, coming out of the same distillery 
what, what, what influences the difference, I suppose, between the green spot we've tasted and the John's Lane? Mm. Well, usually two whiskies, if they weren't coming from the same distillery, you'd, you'd look at what water was used. Was it soft water? Was it really hard water? Um, where did they get their barley from? Was it coming from Roscommon or was it coming from France? Right. Um, what oak did they use? So really, for these two whiskies, the only two comparable differences would be how long they've been aged for and what oak that that they use, which is, which is I suppose, great to see. It's great to be able to, to see the subtle differences between the a slight change in barrel, the green spot being aged in mm-hmm. bourbon, older, also sherry, and the Montalena. So the Montalena will be the only difference between these two whiskies because uh, Powers is aged in bourbon, older, also sherry, and Iberian oak, so the port pipes. And then I suppose you can definitely see that the Powers John's Lane is that bit smoother just for those extra couple of years that um, they've been aged. It's allowed to soften, soften that alcohol and just kind of round it out and essentially make it just that bit more approachable, which you can we definitely saw um, pre-adding the water to the whiskey. Yeah, they're very two very distinctive flavours. The fact that two different names or two different brands come out of the one distillery, I mean, I suppose that's quite interesting. It's kind of a historical factor because of competition rules and stuff that they had to produce once a, a lot of the distilleries had closed down or been forced to close down. So, like, you... You uh, unusual scenario with kind of Irish distillers producing like Tullamore Dew and Powers is their own and the the Green Spot is Mitchell and Sons, but is that now owned by Irish distillers or No, they'd be totally separate companies, Mitchell's. They just have there's quite a uh, there's quite a bit of contract distillation going on, I suppose. Um like Mitchell and Sons would have originally been whiskey bonders, so it's essentially it's almost like a reverse of what Middleton are doing for them. Um, they would have bought Spirit off local distilleries and branded it under their own name. That's how Green Spot was originally founded. Um, so it is, it's very interesting to see, I suppose, a modern day, a modern day uh, almost like a, a remake of um, Whiskey Bonders. Oh. Um, and it is happening more and more often uh, all around the country. We have uh, young distilleries, artisan distilleries, making really small batches, but... You know, to get to get up on their feet and to get going, sometimes they need to purchase whiskey elsewhere and mm. start to build a brand and build a provenance around that brand um, mm. until it becomes viable for them uh, to produce whiskey. Well, not even to produce it, but for it to have been produced and for it to be aged long enough to bottle. Um, by law, it'll be three years and one day before um, you can actually release that whiskey as Irish whiskey. It has okay. to be aged on the island of Ireland for that length of time in oak um, before it can be bottled and the majority of the companies won't actually do that um, they'll wait a bit longer because as we all know a three old whiskey can be quite harsh and uh, very unapproachable I just think it's really interesting that you've got two different brands with two different pot still whiskies with two different very different flavours and different styles coming out probably produced by the same person using obviously different wood and maybe different uh, mixture to the yeah, action. absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's just going to be the uh, the proportions or the ratios of one malted barley and malted barley yeah. being brought together. Uh, There's a big, huge uh, uh, kind of uptake on Irish whiskies worldwide. I mean, I suppose one of the good things for Irish whiskey is that it obviously has to be produced in Ireland, so it can't be taken off-site and mass-produced anywhere else. And the rules are pretty strict, um, as you say, three years in one day, and you know certain barrels they have to be aged in, and uh, you know, like not all of the whiskies now are being aged in sherry barrels. I know there's a shortage in sherry casks, so I mean some of the some of the brands are the have been kind of uh, inventive in what they're aging bar- aging in now. But the pot stills were still in the American oak, and sherry casks and then obviously there was an influence of, of the port and the Zinfandel American wine barrels Yeah with this with this massive resurgence of interest I suppose in Irish whiskey and uh, the old time tradition of it being produced in copper pot stills in the single pot still or the pure pot still style um, we're seeing a lot more of the newer producers um they're under real pressure, I suppose, to, to start reproducing it. 
and to, I suppose, go back to their roots, um, which is, is, is great to see because it's what really sets us aside from other whiskies. You, you don't see pot still whiskies coming out of any other country. I'd say that the Japanese, they're making phenomenal whiskies, but traditionally they're very good at seeing what other countries do, replicating it and doing it to an even higher level. But we still haven't seen a, a, a pot still whiskey coming from them. Um, the Scotch, uh, the Scotch whisky is renowned for their peated single malts, and now there is a bit of uh, an interest happening with distilleries around Ireland, where we would have traditionally probably we traditionally we would have peated our putchings. We would have mm-hmm. used uh, uh, peated malted barley, or uh, sorry, uh, peated um, grain to to make putching, and we're seeing a bit of a resurgence with that as well. Um, so it's great to see that. Possible whiskies are coming to a forefront again, which is something that's so typically Irish, mm. and no one's touching us. So it's part of our heritage. Absolutely, absolutely, it's, it's part of our provenance. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, onwards and upwards for pot-stilled whiskies. One hundred percent. Long may it last. <laughs>